Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to finish up this over-engineered engine stand, put in a shaft that allows us to turn the motor, and a brake to keep it from turning. Let's get to it. Right now I've got two problems. Well, I've got several, but the immediate problems are I don't have a way to make a spline shaft this big. I also don't have any stock big enough to fill that. This is the largest thing I have. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe wrap this with some 18 gauge, weld it on, and then turn it down to the right size so it can press fit through. Now I'll just drill some holes through it so I can plug weld it on. Should be good enough. I mean, the reality is it's just, you know, basically hand force and the uh, weight of that motor should be fine. That should hold. Now I'm just going to turn that down in the lathe so it's the exact same size as the inside of those splines. Well, there we go. Still got a few low spots, but the reality is those aren't going to affect performance. And again, it's just for me. My strategy for rotating this is pretty simple. This is going to come through, and then I'm going to take a piece of square stock. Yeah, it's a railroad uh, spike, but it'll work. And I'm going to weld it on here square, and then cut a notch in the wall of this so this recesses, and then this pulls back. And then I'll have something on this side to prevent it from getting pulled back in this way, and that way it'll hold it square. It'll make a little bit more sense. Once I cut this and weld it, I can't push it through here and show right now because I need to drill a hole back here still. So let me get some stuff cut and welded and then it'll make a little more sense. So, so the idea is here, I'm going to notch out this flange so this sits all the way down in there. So I've got it notched all the way through so this comes in and fully seats like that. So now this will go through that headstock. We'll put a handle over here and the brake over here on the back side. But when I turn look, when I turn this, it'll turn the engine. So, next up is drill the hole in the headstock, then work on figuring out how to keep it from moving forward, and put a brake on. Now I need to make a hole here for this shaft. I'd say there's about a 0% chance I could actually get it centered in the right spot on the first try, so I suspect I'm just going to have to go oversize. Still not 100% certain what I'm going to do. I'd like for it to come through and have almost no gap around it, and then I could put a snap ring on it. That'd be perfect. But there is no chance I'm going to get that hole in the right spot with the tolerance for a snap ring. So we'll come up with something. Oh, well, seems not too bad. Now let's see if we can drill that out. What could possibly go wrong? That looks like it might be just about right. It's 
just the big part of the shaft that I expanded is running into here. Basically this wider part is hitting where the hole is. So I'm going to take about an inch off here, bring it back down to this size. Miracles never cease. So this is the brake drum that's got to go on here. Obviously it flops around. This is the adapter plate that came with it. This is for a one inch shaft. This is a one and a half, so it obviously won't go on there. But it's got quite a bit of meat here. And it's got two set screws to hold it in. I'm not too worried about the keyway. So I think I'm going to put this into the lathe and bore it out so that it fits on here. So I just turned that down basically till the keyway was gone. And I may have killed two birds with one stone here. So now if I put it on here, if I put in these two grub screws, then this can't slide and it provides me a flange to attach the brake. Because this is round, I don't really trust these grub screws holding just a round surface. We'll put a flat spot here and here on this shaft to help those things hold. Doesn't move in or out. Rotates fine. Next up we have to mount this brake. So it's going to need to sit right like this so we can then tighten it. This bolt fits perfect through here. So what I'm going to do, I don't know that I trust just welding it on there. So I'm going to drill a hole through, push it through, and then weld it. That gives me this. We'll make some sort of a spacer to make sure that it stays the right distance out and we can run a nut down to adjust it so that it only goes one direction. And then we need to make some sort of a, I don't know what yet, but a tightening mechanism that lets it pull, pull this in and then grab onto it. So this bolt prevents this from turning. So this bolt is what prevents the whole motor from rotating. Therefore, that needs to be on there really well. Which is, again, why I don't trust just sticking it on. I want to come all the way through. Perfect. So now I'll weld that on there. And then we just have to figure out this clamp and a handle. So here's what I came up with for the brake mechanism. I cut these two out of some bar stock drilled and tapped holes 90 degrees to one another here and then drilled holes 90 degrees here this one is tapped this one's just a straight through hole that's larger than the others that allows this bolt to rotate in here but as you turn this this tightens down so if i take this let's see watch there's a gap there now and then when I tighten it back down it closes that up and that's the brake the shaft right now is not in here I have it back behind me we're going to notch the tubes so that we can weld on that 90 degree handle I also drilled a couple of holes or some recesses anyway in that shaft so that these grub screws could get an even more positive grip on it not a big fan of the fact that I have to use a ratchet to do this. I'll probably come up with some 
better handle, you know, threaded piece. It comes out and has a handle that I can turn manually. But for now, this will work great. I bought this tubing notcher eh, probably 20, maybe even 25 years ago now for another project that never actually happened. But it's been kicking around on a shelf forever. We're finally going to actually use it for a project. Basically, I'm just going to notch this to give it a fish mouth so that the other piece that we put on at 90 degrees sits nice and flat. In hindsight, I probably should have used the bandsaw and cut it off here so that I'd only be cutting half of this. We have to work for this blade. All right, so that fish mouthed that fairly well. It's not exactly even, but close enough. It's just an engine stand and it's just for me. I'll put that on there, weld that in place, and then I can just put a bar, breaker bar or whatever through it as a handle. Well, that looks really good, except now it's got something on both ends, and I can't slide it through that uh, backside. Oops. <laughs> Let's try that again, this time in the right place. Sometimes I'm a dumbass. There we have it, one engine stand. Next, I have to get that thing off of that death trap stand and onto it so we can start taking it apart. But that'll be another project. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.